hello it's thursday so today you've all seen the thumbnail we are going to be making some little bats let's get into it all right let's talk about tools and materials so for today's project you're going to need eight ply 100 percent acrylic yarn in four colors you're going to need a main color for your bat some pink for his nose and feet some cream for his chest fluff and some white for his little teeth you'll also need just a scrap amount of black to add some details to the nose now you can use the same color for his chest fluff and his teeth if you would like. I'll be using two different colors today. You're also going to need a pair of 20 millimeter safety eyes, a 3.5 millimeter hook, pins and needles. This is me from the future coming back to tell you that uh, the sewing part of this is actually real tricky <laughs> and I don't recommend attempting it without at least a curved needle. I also encourage you to have at least one stitch marker or bobby pin on hand, scissors and some stuffing. Now for mine today, I am going to be including a weight in the base. Just to give him that little bit of extra stability, I am using just a glass landscaping rock for that. But this bat does balance relatively well on his own without this, so it is optional. But that's it. A written version of today's pattern will be made available to my patrons and will also be listed on my Etsy, and I will leave links to both in the description down below for anybody who's interested. <laughs> okay, we're going to start our bat today by making this main body piece. So it starts at the top of the head, works down to the chest ruffle, then swap back to our brown and work down to the base of the body. Now, these little pink feet are also built in the round, so we will have to have our pink ready to go before we get started as well. So to start with, grab your brown. And the first few rows of this are pretty simple. We start with a magic ring of six. We then work six increases, which is just two stitches into each stitch around. And I do work invisible increases for this, which just means that the first stitch of my increase goes in the front loop only. And the second stitch of my increase works through both loops. Now you can choose to do your increases however you like, as long as you're putting two stitches into the same stitch. For row three, we're going to work six repeats of a single crochet and then an increase. So there's our first one and we're going to repeat that five more times around to bring our row up to 18 stitches. Row four is six repeats of a single crochet, an increase, and a single crochet. So there's our first one, and we're going to repeat that five more times around to bring our row up to 24 stitches. And staggering our increases like that is going to help us get a round top to the top of our head instead of a very slight hexagon. So there is the top of our little dome. In row five, we're going to work three repeats of seven single crochet. and then an increase. So there is our first one, and we're going to repeat that two more times around to bring our row total up to 27 stitches. Row six is then three repeats of four single crochet, three, and four, an increase, and then four more single crochet. So one, two, three, and four. So there's our first repeat, and we're going to do that two more times to get back to the start of our row, bringing our row total up to 30. Once again, we are battling the hexagon and turning it into a circle. So there we are at the end of row six with 30 stitches total in our round. And row seven is just 30 single crochet around. And then row eight is 29 single crochet around, 27, 28, 29. So that leaves just one stitch in our row. And in that stitch, we are going to work an increase changing to our cream, which is my neck fluff color. 
So to work and increase changing to our cream, we're going to work just the first single crochet of the increase, nothing different there. And then in the second stitch of the increase, I'm going to insert my hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. So I've got two loops of my old color on my hook Then hold that out of the way and grab a strand of my cream. I'm going to line it up on the inside of the work and pinch it at the base of the stitch. Then yarn over and pull through both loops. I'm going to just tug those tails to scooch that stitch down into position. And what it should leave you with is a completed single crochet slash increase in this case in our brown, but our cream is now on our hook ready to go. Now for a little added security, you can take the tail of your brown and the tail of your cream and just tie them together on the inside of the work. Nothing too dramatic there. And I'm not trimming my brown off because we will be changing back to it to complete the body. So we should now have 31 stitches in our round. First, we're just going to work 31 front post single crochet around. So when you look at your crochet, you'll see that they have like a stem or a post of a stitch and then the loops on top that we normally work into. So to work front post single crochet, we insert our hook not through the loops at the top, but instead we insert it around the post of the stitch and it's front post because we're inserting our hook from the front of the work back to the front of the work. We then just yarn over and pull up a loop and yarn over and complete the stitch. So you'll see there we've got a single crochet attached around the post and it does leave the loops on top of that stitch free on the inside of the work, which is sometimes an important detail depending on what kind of structure or shape you're trying to make. But for today, we're just doing this to get a nice clean edge between our colors. So there is our first one and I'm going to continue around now and work a front post single crochet around every single post. And when I reach the end of my row, I'm just going to stop and go back and count to make sure I have 31 stitches. And I do. <laughs> now, just because we're working in cream, I'm going to put down a little bit of backing card so that you can see the next sequence of rows a little bit more easily. And in row 10, we're going to make the first row of the little ruffles. So we're going to work 15 repeats of a single crochet and then a stitch known as a double treble crochet. So to work a double treble, you yarn over your hook three times. Insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. So you should have five loops in total on your hook. You then yarn over and pull through two loops, yarn over and pull through two loops, yarn over and pull through two loops until you've got just two left on your hook and yarn over and pull through the final two loops. And there is our finished double treble crochet. So we're going to repeat that pairing of stitches the whole way around our little bat. Now, if you find double treble crochet just unpleasant to do and you would rather do literally anything else, you are welcome to substitute in either a treble crochet or a double crochet. But just know if you use one of those smaller stitches, your bat will have smaller neck ruffles. You could also just work this as plain single crochet and then use a wire slicker brush to fluff this piece of him afterwards, but your bat will end up looking different to my bat. So there is our last double treble for this round and you should have one stitch remaining and into that stitch we are going to work a single crochet. So there we are at the end of row 10. And row 11 is basically the same thing starting with 15 repeats of a double treble and then a single crochet and then the row finishing with a double treble crochet. Now that means that we are going to be working our double treble crochet into our single crochets from last round and our single crochets into the double trebles from last round giving us a nice staggered fluff appearance. So we have one more row to work in our cream and we're going to start by working a decrease. Now I do work in visible decreases, but standard decreases are also fine. And then 29 single crochet back to the start of our row, changing back to our brown in the 29th stitch. Then we work that color change the same way we did the first time, except this time we're changing from our cream back to our brown. And at this point we are done with our cream and we can trim that off. So now we're back to working in our brown. I'll swap back to a white background. And because of that decrease at the start of the previous row, we should have 30 stitches back in our round. So we're back to a nice multiple of six, which if you've been here for a while, you know, you know, that's what I do. So working in our brown, we are going to once again work 30 
front post single crochet around. And once again, we're doing this not for structural reasons, but instead to get a nice crispy edge between our brown and our cream. So if you do not enjoy doing front post single crochet, you can work regular single crochet. It's just you'll end up with a little stitch zigzag instead of a nice, sharp, clean edge. And your bat will end up just a little bit taller. <laughs> just a little bit taller than mine. There we go. And you'll note that we haven't done the eyes yet. That is intentional. Basically, until we make those little feet, uh, the, which side is the face is kind of up to interpretation. Okay, and now we're going to work up a little bit of a trunk of a body. So row 14 is 30 single crochet around. Row 15 is 11 single crochet and an increase, 7 single crochet, an increase, and then 10 single crochet back to the start of our row, leaving us with 32 stitches in our round. There we go. Row 16 is 32 single crochet around. Like so. Now what you may not know about this little bat is that he does have a tiny little tail and we are going to make that in the next row. So it would be helpful if you did have a stitch marker handy. Uh, I'm using a bobby pin for this, but a scrap piece of yarn would work just as well. So looking at our stitch, we have a front loop and a back loop. We're going to mark just the back loop. Like so. And then work three single crochet all into the front loop. So one, two, three. And that's going to be his little tail. <laughs> the rest of the row is pretty normal. So we're going to work four single crochet. Then three repeats of a decrease and a single crochet. So there's our first one. We're going to do that two more times. Decrease, single crochet, decrease, single crochet. Then it's just five single crochet across what will be the tummy. And then three repeats of a single crochet and a decrease. So there's our first one. We're going to do that two more times. Single crochet, decrease, single crochet, decrease. And then it should just be four single crochet back to the start of our row. So one, two, three, and four. That brings us back to our little tail nub here. Row 18 starts with a single crochet into the marked back loop from last row. So there's mine. I'm just going to insert my hook through that loop and work a single crochet. And we're going to skip three stitches of our round. Now those will be the three stitches that we worked into the front loop last round. So one, two, three, skipping all of those. This one here is the next stitch we're going to work into. And we're going to work two single crochet. So one and two two. We no longer need that marker. We can just pop that out. So there is our little tail established. And in this round, we're also going to be building up his little toesies, which is honestly, I think easier than you think it's going to be. So we're going to work three decreases and we're going to change to our pink in the third decrease. So I'll work my first two decreases. One and two. Now, as mentioned, I use invisible decreases, so I'm going to have to show you this color change twice, once for invisible decreases and once for regular decreases. So I'll do the regular decrease first. So as you may know already, a standard decrease is when you insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, then insert your hook into the second stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, leaving you with three loops on your hook. Then just hold your brown out of the way, grab a strand of your pink and pinch it at the base of the stitch on the inside of the work. So then yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook, completing your decrease and changing to our pink. 
So that is how you change colors using a standard decrease, but as mentioned, I use invisible decreases, so it's just slightly different. So for invisible decreases, you in pick up the front loop only of the two stitches you're decreasing across, and then you yarn over and pull up a loop through both of them. This is leaving me with just two loops on my hook. Then I pull my brown out of the way, grab my pink, pinch it at the base of the stitch on the inside, yarn over, and pull through both loops of my hook, and just settle that stitch down, completing my invisible decrease and changing to my pink. So these are kind of the two options. It's not going to make a huge difference one way or the other which one you choose to use. Once you've picked which ones you want to use, just stick with them for the whole piece. So I am just once again going to secure my pink with a little knot. Not trimming off my brown because we're going to change back to it with alarming regularity for the next little bit. <laughs> so in the next stitch we are going to make our little foot and I'm going to do that by working three double treble crochet all into the same stitch. So double trebles are the same ones we used for the neck ruffles and in the third one we're going to change back to our brown. So one, two, so uh, we start the same way that we normally do. So I've got five loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through two stitches at a time until I've got just two left. So here we are at the end of the stitch. At that point, we're going to change back to our brown. It's just occurring to me that even though there's only a small handful of color changes in this pattern, every time we do one, we're doing it a different way. <laughs> but it's all the same principle. You, For the last pull through, you pull through your new color instead. So that doesn't look like much at the moment, but then we're going to work seven single crochet across the stomach, changing back to our pink in the seventh stitch. And you'll note that what that first stitch has done is folded this little foot over and formed it into like three cute little pink toes. It's exactly what we wanted it to do. Four, five, this is six. And so this is my seventh here. And I'm going to change back to my pink and we're going to do the same thing again to make a second foot. Three double trebles all into the same stitch, changing back to our brown in the final double treble. Like so. Now I'm a little superstitious about trimming off my, my colors too soon, so I'm going to work over the top of this pink strand for the rest of the row, just to really lock those stitches in. So the rest of this row is three decreases. One, two, three, and then two single crocheted at the start of our round. And that should leave you with 24 stitches in your round. At this point I am going to trim off my pink, and just pop it to one side until we need to make the nose. So at this point we are, so now that we have our two little feet telling us which way the front is, and we've got a little tail telling us which way the back is, we are going to stop and insert our eyes and do some stuffing and just a bunch of those little maintenance tasks. So I would like you to grab your eyes and I'm going to put my eyes into row five. So one, two, three, four, five. And we want them roughly above each of the little feet. There's one. And one, two, three, four, five. It's a little, the little foot with approximately six stitches visible between them. So that's that's my rough positioning there. Now it is really important that you leave a lot of room on the back of this head and even the top of this head because those ears that we're going to be making are huge. I do encourage you to play around with the eyes until they look and feel right to you. However, they really do need to be on the front, not on the top of the head. Okay. <laughs> so with that in place. Embracing the fact that everything I do is always a little bit crooked. I'm going to snap the backs on. See if we can get some clicky noises though. So there we go. And now we're going to take stuffing and we're just going to stuff up to this opening. And you do want this piece to be stuffed quite firmly. So just like that. And for me, I'm also going to add my weight at this point. So from here, we will just be closing off the base of our bat. And you can add a little bit more stuffing as you go if you would like to or you need to. Sometimes that closing off process leaves just a little bit of an air pocket that just needs a little bit of filling. So heading into row 19, we're going to start by working a decrease, four single crochet, 
one, two, three, and four. Now that should bring you up to the three stitches that form this little foot. And we're going to work a single crochet three together, which is just where you pick up the front loops only of those three stitches, yarn over and pull through all three, then yarn over and complete your stitch. And you can also do that the standard decrease way. The whole point is that you are just decreasing those three pink stitches down to one brown stitch. We're then going to work another decrease, three single crochet, two, three, a decrease, bringing us around to our second tiny foot where we're going to work another single crochet three together. And then just five single crochet back to the start of our round. So there we go. You should have just 17 stitches left in your round. And then row 20 is a decrease. Two single crochet, one and two. A single crochet, three together. Three single crochet, a single crochet, three together, and then four single crochet back to the start of our round. Leaving us with just 12 stitches around. And then row 21 is just six decreases around. And finish off. Now this will leave you with just a very slight opening at the base of your bat and so we are going to take our remaining tail and just pull it through the front loops only of those remaining stitches and then pull it tight to close and tuck that end away inside. You can give your tail a little pinch to make it form, the little feet a little straighten out. But there is our little baby bat base. <laughs> and the weight gives it a lot of personality. <laughs> okay, so we are now going to make a little nose. So we're going to need our pink and a little bit of white for the teeth. Okay, so grabbing our pink, we're going to start with a magic ring of six. Like so. We're then going to work two single crochet. So one, and two, and then two repeats of three single crochet into the same stitch. So one, two, and three, and a single crochet. There's our first one. We're going to do that again. So three single crochet into the same stitch. And a single crochet back to the start of our row. Now this should leave you with something that's like kind of oval, maybe a little bit triangular. Make sure you've pulled that magic ring nice and tight. And in the next row, we're going to build some little teeth. So we're going to start by working three single crochet, changing to our white in the third stitch. So one, two, this is our third stitch and we're going to change to our white. Like so, and you can tie your tails together to anchor them if you would like but do not trim off the pink. So in our white, in the back loop only, we're going to work a treble crochet. So we've got the front loop facing us and the back loop facing away. So I'm going to work a treble crochet, which is where we yarn over twice, not three times, that's a double treble. Treble is just twice. Insert my hook through the back loop only, yarn over and pull up a loop. So I've got four loops on my hook, and then yarn over and pull through two loops at a time. So you've got a completed treble crochet. Then still working in the back loops, we're going to work three slip stitches across the underside of this nose. So one, two, three. And then we're going to work again in the back loop, a treble crochet, changing back to our pink. There we go. So that is it for the white, but again, superstition kicks in and I'm not trimming it off just yet. 
So in our pink, we're going back to working through both loops and we're going to work two single crochet back to the start of our row. And two. So this is what my nose currently looks like. And that's what it looks like on the underside. So the final row of this starts with two slip stitches, then a single crochet three together. And it's kind of an odd one. So the first loop is this last pink stitch before the tooth. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Yes, I am going directly against what I said about picking a type of decrease and going with it. We're doing this as a standard decrease because I'm not that much of a monster. <laughs> so there's our first loop. The second loop of our single crochet three together is the treble crochet of the tooth itself. So yarn over and pull up a loop there. And the final loop for this single crochet three together is a tricky one. I want you to insert your hook under the front loop that we didn't use last row and under the slip stitch in the back loop. So yarn over and pull up a loop through there and you should have four loops on your hook. Yarn over and complete your stitch. We're then going to work just a single crochet, inserting our hook under the front loop we didn't use last row and the slip stitch in its back loop and work a single crochet over the top. And then we have another single crochet three together. <laughs> So the first one, insert your hook through the front loop we didn't use last row and under the slip stitch behind it, yarn over and pull up a loop. It's our first loop. Second loop is the treble crochet that is the tooth. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Second loop. And then the final loop is the first pink stitch after the tooth. Nothing but the tooth. Uh, insert your hook into it, yarn over and pull up a loop. So you should have four loops on your hook, and yarn over and pull through all four. You are then just going to work one slip stitch back to the start of the row and finish off. And there is our tiny little nose piece. That's what it looks like underneath now because we worked those stitches over the top. So your teeth might be a little higgledy piggledy. You can just give them a poke to get them to face downwards. And this is going to go right there on our little bat. I'm just going to like loosely pin it in place for now. We'll go over the actual positioning later. So with that done, we have ears and wings left. So we're going to do the ears first. The ears on this bat are double wall. They've got like a big outer ear and then a small inner ear. And I make all of my pieces for these ears in brown, but I do feel conflicted about that as to whether or not there should be some cream or pink involved. So please do what feels right to you for these ears. So for the outer ear, we're going to start with a magic ring of six. Row two is six single crochet around. So that is the tippy top of our ear. Then row three is three repeats of a single crochet. And then three single crochet all into the same stitch. So one, two, three. So there is our first one. And we're going to repeat that two more times around the ear to bring our row total up to 12. There we go. It should be like a funny looking little triangle shape. Row four is three repeats of two single crochet, three single crochet into the same stitch. And then a single crochet. So there's our first one. We're going to repeat that two more times around to bring our row total up to 18. Row five is three repeats of three single crochet. Three single crochet into the same stitch. And then two single crochet. One and two. There is our first one. We're going to do that two more times around to bring our row up to 24 stitches. And we have just one more row of this with row six being three repeats of four single crochet. One, two, three, four. Three single crochet all into the same stitch. And then three single crochet. So 
So there is our first one, and we're going to do that two more times to bring our row up to 30. There we go. So I get that this doesn't look much like an ear right now, but bear with me, I promise it does by the time we're through. So now we are just going to work five rows of 30 single crochet each for a combined total of 150 stitches. So that is what our ear should look like. And it should still have like a vaguely triangular shape underneath from where we kind of grew those three corners. And yeah, that's, that's kind of it for this piece. We're going to finish off. <laughs> now to form the ear itself, I want one of the corners on either side and one corner at the back. And we're just going to like push one of the flat edges back towards that back corner and pinch around those edges. Now it's not going to meet the whole way. There's going to be like a little bit of a vacuum in the middle. But uh, that is what that ear actually looks like when it's all like formed. And you are going to need to make two of these, like so. Now just pop those to one side for a moment because we're going to make the second piece of the ear. So once again in our brown, I want you to make a magic ring of five. I know we normally work in sixes, this one here is just slightly smaller. And then we're just going to work three rows of five single crochet for a combined total of 15 stitches. There we go, and finish off. And I'm just gonna scooch both of those ends down inside, because we're not stuffing either piece of the ear. So there is our first little eardrum, and you are going to need two of those. Pop those to one side with the ears. Okay, so the final pieces we need to make for our bat are the wings. So these wings are worked as flat pieces that we chain one and turn at the end of each row. So we're going to start by chaining 10 like so. Then we're going to turn and starting in the second chain from our hook, work nine single crochet back along those chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So there is the start of our wing. Chain one and turn. So all that means is that we chain one and then we rotate the piece so that we're looking at the back of the work. And the next stitch we work into is the last stitch we did in the previous row. And we're going to work eight single crochet back along the row. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. This leaves us with just one stitch at the end of our row and I want you to slip stitch into it and then turn. So that slip stitch is acting like our turning chain and when we start the next row we're going to skip the slip stitch and work seven single crochet back up the row. And then in our last stitch, we're going to work an increase. Chain one and turn. In row five, we're going to start with an increase. And then work seven single crochet down the row. And you will notice with this piece that there is kind of a recurring theme of not necessarily using every stitch in the row, and that's okay. <laughs> seven, chain one and turn. And then in row six, we're going to work two single crochet and then five half double crochet. So we work a half double by yarning over our hook, inserting our hook through the stitch, yarning over and pulling up a loop. So you've got three loops on your hook and you just yarn over and pull through all three loops. So the reason we're doing half double crochet is that they're a slightly taller stitch than a regular single crochet, which is going to help angle our wing very specifically. One, two, three, four, and 
And then in the final two stitches of this row, we're going to put a decrease into each of them. That's one, and I'll just, sorry, show it again. We yarn over our hook once, insert our hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through two loops at a time. So that row was two single crochet, five half double crochet, and then two double crochet. And what that's done is if you look at the base of the stitch, they're straight in this direction. But if you look at the ends of the stitch, we're on a slightly stronger angle. And we're using the heights of those stitches to help tilt our wing. We're going to chain two to turn. So skipping our turning chains, the first stitch of row seven is to work two double crochet into the same stitch. Like so. We're then going to work a double crochet five half double crochet, two single crochet to the end of the row, and then we're going to pico, which just means we chain three, and then slip stitch into the first chain. So that pico is our turning chain. Turn your work. Skipping the pico, it's not adding stitches to our row. For row eight, we're going to work three single crochet up. One, two, three. Five half double crochet. And two double crochet to finish the row. chain one and turn. Row nine starts with two single crochet, five half double crochet, and then one double crochet. Now this is going to leave stitches unworked at the end of the row and we are going to work another picot and turn. You should have eight stitches left in your row at this point. And this is what you currently look like. We've got some like little dippies happening on one side and a little bit of like a slope curve on the other. Row 10 starts with a double crochet, then five half double crochet, and a decrease. Chain one and turn. Row 11 starts with a decrease, a single crochet, and then three half double crochet. Chain one and turn. Row 12 is two half double crochet, a single crochet, and then a decrease. Chain one and turn. Row 13 is a decrease, and then two single crochet, picot and turn, so that just means work out picot, and turn, then row 14 is a single crochet, and a decrease. Now we're not quite done. That is what our wing currently looks like. As mentioned, we've got some little like swoopies happening on the bottom edge and one big curve along the top. Instead of chaining one and turning, we are simply going to rotate and basically work up these edges. And we're going to work up and around these edges back to what will be the shoulder joint. And in the middle, we're going to stop and create just like a little like fingery hooky claw thing. So working in the little gaps at your edges, I want you to work six single crochet up to like the tallest point of your wing. The exact stitch count does not really matter for this piece as long as you end up roughly where you want your finger claw to be. And it should be approximately six stitches. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's where I currently am. I'm going to work a double treble crochet, which is the one that starts with yarning over three times. And depending on if this is your left wing or right wing, you either want it to bubble to the front or bubble 
to the back of the piece. But for this one here, this is my left wing, so I will bubble it to the front. And then we are going to work single crochet down the edges to this shoulder joint. And once again, that should be approximately seven stitches, but the exact stitch count doesn't matter as long as you end up at that shoulder joint. Seven. You may need to like give your claw a little bit of a pull and finish off. So there is our first little wing. It is my left wing. And I'm now going to do the exact same process to make the right wing. And there is my right wing. And as I was working that double treble finger claw, I've just made sure that it bobbles out to the back of the work. And I'm just encouraging it to curve that way instead of this way. So there are the little wings that will take our fellow from mouse to feeder mouse. Okay, so now we have all of our pieces. All we need to do is assemble our bat. So we're going to start with the nose. And I'm just going to take a little bit of black and we're just going to stitch on some nostrils to start with. Now I am going for quite large nostrils on mine, but you should make yours whatever size you feel suits your bat. There we go. That should get the job done. Oh yeah, that's going to be super cute. And next I'm going to pin it into position. Now this nose position is relatively simple. You kind of just want it between those two eyes. So you should have maybe one stitch visible between the nose and the eye on either side if you're using the same size eyes as I am. And I kind of like it so that the top of the nose is kind of loosely level with the top of the eyes and the bottom of the nose is loosely level with the bottom of the eyes and the teeth just stick out a little bit more. Okay, and now I'm going to take a little of my pink and sew our nose on. Okay, make sure that passes the tug test. And that just means when given a little bit of a yank, does it stay on or does it come off? Mine stays on. And then trim off your pink. And I want you to change the yarn we're using over to brown because that's what we'll be doing the rest of our assembly with. So there is the nose all sewn on. Okay, so with the nose attached, the next thing we're going to do is the ears. So the easiest way to do these ears might be a little counterintuitive. And that is we're going to pin all four pieces into place. And then we're going to take the two largest pieces off again so that you have proper access to sew the smaller pieces on. So I want you to grab one of your larger pieces, which has already been folded, and I want you to line one of the edges up with the edge of your fluff just behind one of the eyes. And we are just gonna pin that in place. Now with the other edge, I want you to find your starting magic ring and curve that edge around until it's sitting basically just on top of it. Now it's just distinctly on its own side of the head, but it's just on top of that magic ring. And then the rest of it is just sort of smooshing and smoothing the back of the ear down until this entire back edge makes contact with the head itself. So there is one ear. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So that is what the ears currently look like for me. See how we've got like this little triangle of the base of the head exposed at the back. But from the front, we are nicely framing each of the eyes. And now we can really easily see where each of these inner ear pieces go. So I'm going to put each one into like the alcove of the ear, just behind one of the eyes. There's one, and there's two. So that's what that's the look we're aiming for. So I'm suggesting that you remove the larger outer piece in order to have access to sew around the base of the inner ear and then pin the outer ear back in place and sew around the edges of those. And so that's what I'm going to do now. now if you're feeling up for a challenge, absolutely try and sew it all on without having to unpin anything. <laughs> Just make sure that everything is anchored properly. 
and that you've sewn it on using every stitch around. Oh, I'm so tempted to give it a try, but we, we won't. So I'm taking my pins out, but I am using them to like mark where this ear hit the body. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, even though I, once pinned on, I really don't like removing pieces. <laughs> so that's a good idea for where those little pieces go. But I would encourage you not to skip the large pieces because the last thing you need is to sew these little pieces on just to find the large pieces don't fit around them. So with those sewn on, we just repin the outer ears on using our marker pins to make sure that we get it in the exact same position. Just making sure that I got all the pins out. And there's our little Bashy's ears. And now to take our mouse and turn him into Klaus the Peter Mouse <laughs> with the wings. And these just go on either side and you do want the bottom edge of them to line up with just above the foot. That is the sort of outer edge of the foot. And you want this top edge of them to line up in between the floofs, you just split the floofs however you need to, so that it butts up almost against the ear, basically. Or in my case, against the ear, but it doesn't matter if they don't go all the way up. So that's where one goes. And note that I folded it forward to pin it, and then when I fold it back, it holds its shape a little bit better. And same thing on the other side here, where I'm going to put the bottom edge against the outer edge of that foot. Move the floofs out of the way and line that up to just under the ear. Just pin it as many times as you need to to make it feel secure. And that is where the bat wings go. And they should like allow him to console himself and whatnot. But yeah, we're just going to sew down the outer edge of each of these wings. Just like that. And now I just need to tuck my little ends away. There we go. And there is our finished bat. <laughs> I hope you had fun making him with me today. But yeah, other than that, I'll see you next week. Okay, bye. Hello, it's Thursday. <laughs> ah. For today's project, you're going to need 8-ply 100% acrylic yarn in three colours. 8-ply 100% acrylic yarn in four colours. We'll just see which one's more visible. We already have our answer. I feel like those shadows are real intense and we'll just have to adjust it in post. But okay. There we go. So there is our nice little double ruffle bat fluffle. <laughs> oh, not our new brown round. How now, brown round? Seven single crochet. Oh no, I'll just do that separately. Never mind. <coughs> oh, please stop spinning. <laughs> so we are going to start with our. This is not the pink. This is a different pink. Hold on. I didn't remember that I did that in this pattern, and I am sorry. That tells the material section was missing some stuff. All right, here we go. And I've done that to avoid you having to change colors quite as often on this piece. So like that wasn't just malice. This is me trying to be helpful. <laughs> <coughs> is it just me or do these wings look very different sizes? They're not though. It's an illusion. Still recording? Still got plenty of battery? Oh, 15%. Ah. Wee. <laughs> Your 
very cute. 